What's up, guys? How you doing? Guys, welcome. Welcome in. Come in. Come in. Settle down. It's, guys, shut up. It's uh, Wolf Den podcast time. Hi, Will. Will's sleeping. Will's back no, there. Not, what are I'm you not, doing? My, my, my foot's itchy, man. Why is really your foot? Why is, I don't know. Why is your foot know. itchy? It just is itchy, and it's bothering me. And I swear to, I swear to God, I'm not making this up. This happened like right before you said you were gonna go live. So now I got, I got to deal with this, and I got to make a bit out of it for the start of the show. <laughs> you know, I, I don't like that. I just want to have a normal podcast, and here I am risking turning this into a fetish show. Are you? We have kids watching. Are Are you allergic to all these people? Are you allergic to podcasting? Are you allergic to? Uh creating content what's up bob bob i'm a white guy of course i'm not allergic to podcasting oh right you're right you're, you're, you're okay. required to have a podcast right right it's in your blood okay i understand um are you good is it, i thought there was more to this I'll be, bit <laughs> i'll be okay i'll learn to live with it i thought this was like a sonic tie-in or something like he's always running he's got athlete's foot i don't know he probably does uh well, well, anyway, hi, everybody, and, and Will's foot. Welcome to the podcast. A uh, special thank you to Luke Antone with the 32 months. Bad news, guys. My uncle who works in Nintendo said there's going to be more, no more directs ever. You know what? You said bad news. I don't see a problem with that. Um, <laughs> War Machine, thanks for the two months. Sup? Hey. Ferris Rex, thanks for the 21 months. And Miss Texone, thank you for the 34 months. Will, the whole chat wants you to show feet. I say, uh, I say, that's premium content. You have to yeah, subscribe uh, at the premium tier for that. Yeah. I was going to say, platinum members only. So, listen, there's a lot of news, but none of it is main topic worthy. So, yeah. the title of this is, I don't know, man, we're still waiting for a Nintendo Direct because we still are. It's uh, been rumored to we're, be... Well, we're getting one, like, this week, right? But Hold, it's, hold up. It's, Okay. Roll, just pause. It was rumored to happen last week. Mm -hmm. That obviously did not happen. But last week, everyone was saying, no, no, no. It's going to happen on the 29th. And I think we talked about that on the show already, that it's going to happen did, on the yeah. 29th. What mm -hmm. nobody expected was Nintendo to come out the other day. Was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. I think it was yesterday. They came out and they were like, yo, Fuck all y'all, Xenoblade Direct. <laughs> it's happening Wednesday. A 20 minute presentation on Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and only Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Do you remember the last time they did a 20 minute presentation on Xenoblade? <laughs> it was like that old guy, that old like turtle thing yeah, talking yeah, yeah, and yeah. explaining all yep. the game mechanics for like 20 yep. minutes. Uh, yeah. there's not a chance in hell I'm waking up tomorrow to <laughs> to watch this. Yeah, but You're I mean, gonna... there, there's still a chance that we're getting a Nintendo Direct uh, next week. Anyway, this is this is a yeah. Xenoblade Direct. Nobody yes. rumored a Xenoblade Direct. Uh, but... when is this game supposed to come out? It got delayed. Supposedly, it swapped with a different game. I think they did. Yeah. I think it was because Final Fantasy was also having a game coming out around this time. So they, I mean, that mm -hmm. was the rumor. So, so they moved this. Do they move it up? They might have moved it up. They, uh, according to Google, it's scheduled for release July 29th. Oh, shit. They did. Okay. So, so this is, I'm pretty yeah. sure this is supposed to release later in the year. And then they moved it up. Okay. Uh, and they swapped S Splatoon. So it's Strongest Journey. They put Splatoon there. Or he said because uh, of Splatoon, but I I I think it was because of a Final Fantasy game they didn't want to overlap with. It was initially uh, set for release in September. It was later shifted to July 29th. Uh, doesn't say why. I don't think they gave, they didn't give a reason. Uh, the 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 the, yeah. the speculation was that there was a Final Fantasy game and also something to do with Splatoon. I think they swapped right. Splatoon and Xenoblade. Um, but I I feel like so. Let's say that they are going to do the Nintendo Direct next week, but they're still going to do the uh, the Xenoblade Direct this week. Yes. Essentially a month before the game's release. Why wouldn't you flip it? 
why wouldn't you have the general Nintendo Direct this week and then the Xenoblade specific game uh, Direct closer to the game's release? So that this way it's fresher in people's memory when they go out and get the game. To fuck with people. <laughs> I, I, so normally what they do, you're right. Normally what they do is they'll release, uh, they'll have a direct and they'll have a little snippet of the upcoming game. And then they'll say, tune in tomorrow or the ne- or next week when we'll have a 20 minute presentation only on Xenoblade. That's right. normally what they do. Um, maybe they don't feel like doing that. Maybe they have such a jam packed Nintendo direct next week that they're, that they don't want to talk about Xenoblade at all. Yeah. Which would be weird. That would be really stupid and weird because I'm not interested in Xenoblade at all. (laughs) I'm not watching this at all, but if it was in a Nintendo direct, I would be forced to watch it. You know, Mm -hmm. unless there is going to be no Nintendo Direct next week, and there's not going to be a, like a general Nintendo Direct for a while. So no. they figure get make a Direct about the next big game that they're releasing, get that out of the way, and then they'll worry about doing a Direct. I really hope there's no Direct next week. <laughs> I want everybody to be blindsided by there being no Direct because everybody's waiting yeah. for it and anticipating it. I, I want everybody to be wrong. <laughs> I think that would be great. Um, I mean, I want more Nintendo news. Don't get me wrong, but uh, yeah. I'm sick of all these people uh, being so sure about themselves with these Nintendo rumors. I just want them. I I want them to be wrong. Um, hey, a very special thank you to Alec is baking for the raid. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hope you like feet. Hope you hope you like feet. <laughs> Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I don't know what this is about. I I I think it's very funny that everybody's been sitting here waiting for a Nintendo Direct, and Nintendo's like, "Here's a Direct. <laughs> this is what you wanted, right?" Yeah. Um. But yeah. So hopefully, ne- but next week it's a rumor to be the 29th, so we still won't talk about it on this show. Yeah. It, it might be like a next day thing. It might might be like it'll probably be announced on Monday, and then and then it'll have, then we'll have to talk about it happening, but but it will be too early to to comment on it. Yeah. Um. But luckily, I have another podcast called the Nintendo Podcast that goes up on Thursdays, so uh, we'll have time to talk about it there. Uh. Anyway. Uh, that's all we have to say about there being a Nintendo Direct. We're still waiting for it. So there's plenty of news otherwise that we need to talk about uh, that isn't Direct related, though. Um, yes. The first thing you have here is that there's going to be 30 free games on Amazon Prime. Uh, yeah, so this will be part of their, uh, their, you know, every year the good Lord Bezos blesses us with Prime Day, uh, two days of the week where Amazon has a lot of crappy sales like they've been getting worse and worse every year, uh, and but this year, uh, Prime Day giveaway also features uh, up to thirty free games, including the Mass Effect Legendary Edition and more. Whoa! Uh, Amazon Prime members will be able to claim over thirty free games as part of this year's Prime Day promotion, including Mass Effect Legendary Edition, uh, 2021's compilation of the original Mass Effect trilogy, and recent Codemasters Racing game Grid Legends. Prime Day will be held July 12th to the 13th this year. Yes, that's two days. According to Amazon, while the promotion's running, Prime subscribers will be able to download over 30 PC games for free via the Prime Gaming Service. Other featured titles are 2019's Need for Speed Heat and a trio of classic Star Wars games, Jedi Outcast, Jedi Academy, and Republic Commando. In the run-up to the big days, uh, over 25 indie games will be available uh, to Prime members for free starting June 21st. Standouts from this selection include several SNK classics like Fatal Fury Special, Metal Slug 2, Samurai Showdown 2, and a couple of King of Fighters games, Cult Platformer, The Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams, and Call and Puzzle Adventure Hue. Prime Gaming is one of the strangest and most easily forgotten offshoots of the sprawling Amazon Prime service. It mostly cons- offers free DLC items and in-game boosts plus a handful of older PC games at one, at any one time. It's no Game Pass or PlayStation Plus, 
uh, in other words, but it will be worth remembering to log in during Prime Day to claim some freebies. Uh, that's like a whole month away, it feels like. It's like three yes. weeks away. Got, got yeah. a while to, till, till that happens. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, this, here's still, the full list. Yeah, is it's still full? a big deal because Amazon's giving away free games. You know, if you're if you're a PC gamer and you don't have any of these games, it, it doesn't look like it's going to be part of like their Luna, a subscription or anything. So just get them. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. I mean, so they give away free games every month. Just like, so, at the, if you're new to this show, hi, welcome. My name is Bob, and that's Will over there. Every uh, month at the beginning of the month, we talk about how there's free games that you can claim if you have any of these online services like Xbox Live. Uh, 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 PlayStation Plus, um, and Amazon Prime also has ones that they give away for free. Usually, they're not that great. Sometimes they're pretty great. Um, we're mostly console gamers here, so we don't often talk about the Amazon stuff, but we do sometimes when it's pretty good. Um, this is part of that. Now, yeah, on on Prime Day, they're giving away a whole thirty of them. Uh, notably, Jedi Academy. And Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, some of our favorite yes. Star Wars games of all time. Yes. Uh, also, Republic Commando, uh, the cult classic Star it's Wars also tactical great. shooter. Yes. That is also a great game. Um, uh, I have friends who've been playing Mass Effect uh, Legendary Edition. That you know that includes, of course, Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. Uh, and they love it. So if, you're, if you were into those games back in the day, or if, you're, if you need a space RPG, you know, that's, the, that's the trilogy to get. As for the indie games, I don't really see any that jump out at me, honestly. I think people uh, like Death Squared. Otherwise, I don't <laughs> really see anything that's crazy. What's 10 Second yeah. Ninja X? That sounds fun. Am I am I gonna like this game? I mean, I can recognize like like they said, the SNK games, King of Fighters, uh Samurai Showdown, Metal Slug 2, very good game. Uh, the Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams I am familiar with. Um, some people might want to check that one out. That's a fun little platformer. Uh, a 10 Second Ninja looks kind of looks kind of sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. There's plenty of good stuff here, and it's free, so you just download it. And, and it, it's one of those situations where even if you don't have any time to play right now, just download it so you have it. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned in my video last week, Will has every friggin' Xbox Live yep. game that they've ever announced. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that comes in handy though, because uh, well, a while ago, uh, I had gone through a bunch of games and I had some downtime and I just wanted to play some quick games. But thanks, because I'm a PS Plus member, I was able to play Journey and Gone Home. Mm-hmm. Didn't have to pay for them because they were included in my PlayStation Plus subscription. Also, if you have Amazon Prime, there's a lot of perks. You get free yes. games every once in a while. You get in-game loot, too. So I, I, I used it for some Valorant stuff. I got a little CRT TV hanging off of my gun in Valorant. But also, you get a free subscription here on Twitch. So if you're listening to yes. this, if you're a frequent listener over on iTunes or YouTube or whatever, and you have Amazon Prime, make a Twitch account, go over to Twitch, and f- link it, and then just just do the little it's this button it's not going to look like this over on your side it's this little button right here you click on that and it and it'll and you could do an you could do a free subscription uh and help support us for free you don't have to do anything you don't have to pay anything um and you have to do it uh, every month you can do it. Every month you get a you get a free subscription to any Twitch streamer, and you have to do it manually yeah. every month. It doesn't auto renew. Um, so this is your reminder to do that if you'd like to help support us for with no, no additional cost to yourself. Uh, anyway, uh, there's also new games coming to Game Pass. I put that up here because yes. I thought it was relevant. Uh, f- yeah. So this is for I guess the second half of June. We're getting. The uh, Shadowrun trilogy. We're getting Total War Three Kingdoms. We're getting uh, on June twenty third FIFA twenty two, and on June twenty third we're getting uh, Naraka Blade Point. Now that's the game that was in the Xbox showcase. 
Yes. That's the 60 player battle royale that I'm actually yes. pretty interested. Yeah, I'm interested in that. So that's in two days. Okay. Yes. I'm uh, gonna give that a try. Yes. And on July 1st will be a Far Cry 5. So if you are not bored of the Far Cry games yet, play that. So wait, that what was the one that was in the Prime games last month? There was a Far Cry game that I kept I, I kept confusing with Assassin's Creed. Four Far Cry Four. Oh, so this time so we're getting five in, in, five in 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 Game Pass. Okay. Yeah, I've heard of five isn't bad for a Far Cry game. Uh, I haven't played it. I've been tempted to play it, but I I was so disappointed by the fact that Far Cry Four is literally just Far Cry 3 in a different country. I I played Far Cry 5 and it I I played like a few hours of it. It was exactly yeah. the same as Far Cry 4, which was exactly the same as Far Cry 3, so I stopped playing it after a little bit. Okay. I saw a cool thing where like a bobcat like just like attacked a car or something and that was cool. <laughs> Or no, yeah. I think it was like an eagle attacked a bobcat. I don't know. I witnessed like a, a wacky like environmental like onslaught, but uh, yes. I, but the, I mean, it's just it was all it's all the same game. Um, yeah. Did we say Turtles? Uh, Shredder's Revenge. Shredder's Revenge is part of uh, uh Yeah, game we Pass. said that. I think we said that last week, or mm-hmm. I, we said it when we found out that Shredder's Revenge was going to be part of Game Pass. Um, I am playing it on my Switch, and it is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I want to play it. I haven't played it. You know what I decided to play instead? Uh, Neon White. Oh, I know that game. It's honestly fucking awesome. I I (laughs) decided to play that because I was like, I'll play Shredder's Revenge. I know I'll play Shredder's Revenge. Yeah. But Neon White, if I don't play that now, I'm never going to play it because it's in it's in you know it's a it's it's a new game. I need to play it while it's new. It's. It feels. I saw somebody say that it. It. It's like. Uh, it's kind of like a PS2 game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I. It's so hard. It looks like a. It's so hard to describe. It's like a. It's like a. It's like a. A Temple Run situation. I don't know. It's like you ever watch a YouTube video of like a a, a guy who's like. Uh, talking about like YouTube drama, maybe he's trying to cancel somebody, and they have like like CS ghost sledding going on in the background, or some weird game yeah. happening where they're like in Minecraft jumping between like like platforms. It's that, but a whole game out of it. And then in between <laughs> that, there's like Catherine style, like like uh like overly sexual like anime dialogue, right? But apparently, this isn't even a Japanese developer; it's an American developer. Um, oh wow. But it's freaking sick. It's a it's it's a first person platformer with shooting that is all like a like a like speed running. It's sick. Right. It's like super fast paced, and it wants it, it right. makes you want to play yeah, it faster yeah. and faster. And I've been talking for a long time about how I'm sick of these AAA games and how that nothing's really like uh, uh be, nothing's d- d- being developed that's like different. Everything feels the same. Uh, this is totally different than anything I've ever played before. The only I can right. only like equate it to like mods in other games, like the platforming in Minecraft or the CS Go sledding, or 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 like kind of like Mirror's Edge, but there's like shooting and stuff. So I don't know. Right. Uh, it's like it's like a it's like it it's it's like a speed running like like puzzle platformer. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. It's card based, says indie list, but like uh the cards it's not really cards. Like like they're car they're physical cards, but they're really just abilities that you pick up right. and use. Um so I don't know, it's awesome. That's my public service announcement that everybody needs to play Neon White. I've been playing it on the PC though, so I've been using a mouse and keyboard. I haven't been playing. The game the was written by OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes writer Ryan Shannon. Oh, that's interesting. That was a funny show. Yeah. And it's gotten a lot of shit for its dialogue. <laughs> right. I have to say it is a little it is pretty there is a lot of dialogue and it's pretty mm-hmm. weird. It made me I, I was like, "Oh, it's just a weird Japanese developer. It's fine." But then I re- realized it's not. Um yeah, there's a lot of like weird like 
like all the girls are like trying to flirt with the main character and stuff. It's like really, yeah. it's like really bizarre. Um, but it's good. I like it a lot, despite all that. It's also like a, it's got like dating sim elements apparently, which is why that shit happens. Uh, right. I haven't really gotten too deep into that though. Anyway, uh, you should try it on the Steam Deck, Bob. Yeah, I will. Uh, that's, that's why I, I didn't hesitate to get it on PC because I didn't have, I, I wanted to stream it and I didn't have a capture card and I was like, I'll just get it on PC. Who cares? Uh, and I know that I could just play it on Steam Deck if I, if I really, if I really want to. Anyway, oh, wait, there's more, uh, free games you can get with your online services. Uh, yes. Over on the world of Nintendo. Pokemon Snap is coming to N64 <laughs> on Switch Online. They have a whole ass like trailer for it. And it yeah. looks like a new, like, like this doesn't, this like room that they created. Is this, is this in the game? I think this so. like slideshow thing. I was yeah, like, did they, did they make a, a new like render? Cause why is no, this wide? This is widescreen. Huh? Maybe it's not. There is a place in the game where you can view your work, and I, I think you would go to Professor Oak's lab at one point. Is it, guys? Is this in? Is that beginning sequence in the game? Let us know. Anyway, we I played think... this once, like thirty years ago, and yes. returned it to Blockbuster. Uh, no, we played it. I mean, we. Definitely rented it, but I played yeah. it a bunch because I wanted to get the, uh, I got all the, I, I, I used to get the prints. Yeah. No, it literally says not actual gameplay footage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's sick that they, that they made this. It's so yeah. stupid. It's literally just a static shot that's slowly zooming in, but still that's yeah. like, they don't normally like create like content for the, uh, for the, games for the retro games that they re-release yeah. on on their online service so it's pretty cool uh i'll say though terrible thumbnail on youtube though <laughs> it's it's like pikachu surfing but it like barely looks like yeah. a surfboard yeah and it doesn't really like it doesn't tell you anything about the fact that it's pokemon snap it could be any pokemon game from that era yeah well i mean pikachu surfing is like a iconic thing that's oh, pokemon snap yeah. right there oh Yes, yeah, th thumbnail is absolutely horrible. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's Pikachu it's fat Pikachu on a pink thing. And like you can't even tell that like there's a lightning bolt on the surfboard. I don't know. It's it's yeah. It's it's a rough one. Uh But yeah, there you go. You can play the original Pokémon Snap. Honestly, a hot take might be better than the new Pokémon Snap. <laughs> Please stop body yep. shaming Pikachu. I'm. I, I. There's a clear distinction between fat Pikachu and 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 modern Pikachu. Yeah. Wow. How how else can I say that? Um, thick Pikachu with pre, two C's. Pre weight loss Pikachu. That's a big call. They both have their place. Does the new Pokemon Snap have a place? Because. Because it's a shitty game <laughs> that feels like an old N64 game. When did when that we game already come have out? an N64 version of Pokemon? Did Snap. that game come out this year? It came out in 2021 for sure. Okay. Well, either way, like the game came out and like people did not like pe like that was it. Like nobody went back to it. Nobody talked about it after that. Like, it literally just came and went. It's because there's nothing in this stupid game. It's just like yeah. the original Pokemon Snap. There was nothing in the fucking game. Nothing happened in it. It was just an on rails. You just, you, 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 you take pictures and hope an event happens. And back then, that was kind of cool because it was three, we were new to 3D. <laughs> yeah. So, like, doing on rails, like, arcadey shit was, like, new to us. Yeah, it came out April last year. New Pokemon Snap. It was yeah, it was stupid. I feel like any indie developer could have done something incredible with a game like that. Yeah. Anyway, we have notifications to discuss here. Okay. Like Mega Man, who I think is very mad at me for saying that. Uh, 
the game sucked. Uh, thank you for the nine months. Oh, no, 36 months. Happy anniversary, Wolf Bros. Thank you very much. Yeah. Happy anniversary. Poll line with the 41 months. Ads? Cancel whole all podcast. Uh, <laughs> hey, you're on Twitch. Yeah. If you're not subscribed, Twitch just gives you ads. There's a whole controversy now because Twitch is like trying to get people to use ads more because I can run ads if I want. But uh, right. Like in the middle of the of the stream, but I don't because that's slam. But you have to watch an ad if you're gonna start watching on Twitch, which is really annoying because it's a live content. Um, apparently, they're only paying. It's a, I think it's like across the board. No matter how many viewers you have, you're gonna get twenty dollars a month from ads. <laughs> yeah, it's like something fucking ridiculous like that. So there's a people are very mad at Twitch right now because of their ads, and I don't blame them. Uh. That's so Raven. Thank you for the nine months. Hey, Bob, did you know that Super Mario Bros. 2 is actually a Japanese game called Doki Doki Panic? Did you know that you're now banned from the chat? That's crazy. Bring it back. Jay Cannon, That's thank you for the five man. gifted subs. Uh, Jarvie Rocks, thanks for the prime. And No Banana Suits, thank you for the 27 months. TMNT Fire. It is a very good game. I'm just going to keep saying that every time it gets brought up because it is a very, very good game. <laughs> uh, he's been playing it with the 8-Bit Do Arcade Stick, which is probably oh. great. Yeah, that must be nice. I'm playing it on my Switch portably. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it actually isn't bad. It, it works well in portable mode. Do you wish you had a D-pad? No. I mean, I've been using the, the stupid like face buttons as a d-pad and it like that hasn't really hindered me uh in any way okay so i think because like if i want to go up down left or right i just go up down left right i don't need to do like any like fancy diagonal moves all that much mm -hmm. if i really need to i'll use the thumbstick um okay remember all that stuff we talked about how sonic frontiers doesn't make any sense when they say it's an open zone game it's either open world or it's not yeah uh well now uh there's some more explanation for they us. tried to explain it i don't know if they did a good job but we'll see uh, i'm gonna bet that they did not do a good job sonic frontiers will be the fir uh, the first new 3d sonic game since 2017 sonic forces unlike previous level based endeavors however sonic frontiers will be the series first title to boast a vast and freely explorable world which sega has referred to as open zone so why is it open zone as opposed to an open world? Uh, director Moriro Kishimoto told IGN all about it. Kishimoto refers to open zone as Sonic Frontiers' secret weapon. Level-based platformers often have a world map. Our open zone is a world map, only we've made it entirely playable, Kishimoto stated. Um, a playable world map that includes stage-like elements is something that hasn't really been done before. Uh, so we had to come up with a new name. Uh, what is often defined as a world in other level-based platformers is called a zone in Sonic games. So we took that and combined it with open, which refers to a freely explorable field. So that's what open zone stands for. Uh, Kishimoto sees the open zone as an evolution of the traditional world map, of course, one, of, one that has been tailored to match Sonic's high-speed gameplay. Super Mario Bros. 3 was released in Japan in 1988. I believe this was the first game to introduce a world map. The system has been used by countless platformers since, even to this day. A true evolution of this structure is that we see as the essence of Sonic Frontier's field. We wanted to provide a next-gen, level-based platforming experience, but how do we evolve a level-based platformer like Sonic into this new open zone? That's what Sonic Frontier's is about, said Kishimoto. Uh, usually, a level-based platformer's world map is... A uh, Level-based platformers world map is an arena from which of the player is, departs is, to various is stages. in an area from which the players depart to various stages. So, so uh, yes. Uh, so, so it's like a like a like an overworld. Yes, yes. Basically, what he's saying is that the whole game is basically Peach's Castle from Super Mario sixty four, except with actual obstacles and enemies and whatnot. But that's just fucking open world. I know. <laughs> so it I, seems it seems to me he didn't want to call it open world because uh, 
because there's there's it i don't know like it's a, like a terminology th- i don't know like yeah he he so he he didn't want know. people to confuse it with the world map which would never have happened anyway i i think this is what it boils down to if you re- rewind a little bit when he says what is often referred to as a world in other level based platformers is called a zone in sonic games so we took uh... that and combined it with open so it's an open world. It's just because in Sonic games there are zones. Wait, it's open zone. I know they call them zones in Sonic games. Yeah, but it's not the same. Like a like a zone in a Sonic game is a level. Yeah. Where is that in this? I need to I need to dissect it. Oh, I hit a button. Oh no. It's up. It's up. It's uh above the uh. The video that says Sonic Frontiers preview the first hands-on impressions. A playable world map that includes stage-like elements is something that hasn't really been done before. Uh, yes, it absolutely has definitely been done before. <laughs> so we had to come up with a new name. What is often defined as a world in other level-based platformers is called a zone in Sonic games. He's talking about Mario. Yes. World 1-1. So the world is is there's there's eight worlds in the original Mario Brothers. Yeah. So in I Sonic I'm... there's there there would be called zones. Right. Like I like 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 Ice Cap Zone Act 1 and 2. Yes. Okay, but that has nothing to fucking do with the term open world game. That's t- com- com- a completely different thing. I think a better explanation for this would have been how Mario Galaxy's levels are designed. Like, New Donk City, you know, is open. You can go around and you can do missions and you can platform on it, but there's no uh, structure, so to speak. Like, you can just go around and explore at your own pace and complete missions as you see fit. It- the way that's he... what that's what open zone sounds like to me except instead of it being level by level it's the whole game what when, when he first when i first heard this term i fi- i assumed okay it's not open world then it's not cuz cuz yeah. they're making an excuse already that means it's not open world after hearing this explanation it sounds like it is open world they just wanted to take that term and sonicify it because they because they wanted to use zone because zone is the way that Sonic calls his levels he calls them zones so instead of open an open level concept or an open world concept it's open zone because it's just using Sonic terminology that's what it sounds uh, like to me later in the article he says the open zone stands central in Sonic Frontiers gameplay and the game's levels exist as elements within this area. From grinding rails to platform objects, loops, and so on, the open zone is packed with the uh, athletic action we love in Sonic games. So, yes, it's an open world that's been Sonicified, which means yeah. it's now an open zone. <laughs> yeah, like that—that's not unique. Like, I don't know what I don't know what he thinks. Like, of co- open world games are designed to have all of those fucking things in there. They're just designed in a way that that, that it's uh, it's it's invisible. You don't see the level design because it's all it, it's all it's all packed in. You know, yeah. Like I saw this great video that has it, it, it's a bit of an aside, but I saw this great video about how uh, like you ever be playing like like a first person shooter and it's all calm and quiet and you're doing like story based stuff and then all of a sudden you yeah. walk into an area that's open and you see a lot of cover and you're like oh. Mm-hmm. There's gonna be a there's gonna be a boss fight here, or there's gonna be like yeah. a, I'm about to get into a fight here. Um, the best games like like uh, like Red Dead Redemption, for example, hide that stuff so you don't know that the that the that the area that you're in is designed to have a bunch of cover in it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, open world games have levels in them. They're just <laughs> hidden amongst the whole rest of the world. This game. Right did a shitty job of hiding the levels it's just just there they're just they're just like they look like they were just plopped right in yeah you know 
I mean, f- from what I've seen from the gameplay, it doesn't look like you like blip into a zone. It looks like it is truly open world from what we've seen. Yeah. Uh, it's just the the weird terminology that they want to use to Sonicify it. Yeah. I'm not saying that I mean, the game's going to be ba- bad necessarily. I'm not saying that the that the elements that they put into it, the level elements are going to be bad. I'm just saying they didn't like hide it in the open world. They just plopped the elements in there. And I, I mean, look, if they wanted to just plop the elements right in there, I think that's fine. I think they should have had a better way of wording this terminology because you know, it, it's there's nothing wrong with it being open world. When you call it open zone and you emphasize the fact that it's open zone, you're trying to say that this is something different from other open world right. games. Which, look, Red Dead Redemption is open world, but that's different from Skyrim, which is open world, which is different from uh, Breath of the Wild, which is open world. There are different types of open world games. And there's certainly room for a Sonic-style open world game in the the current gaming landscape but you know don't pretend like you're better than the other open world games that are out there especially because you haven't come out yet so you haven't proven yourself and you know you're sonic the hedgehog your track record is a little (laughs) spotty at best here it it that what they should have done was said yes it's open world but we call it open zone because it's sonic that's what they should have said they should have. They could. They should have just said it's open world, but it's a Sonic-ified version of what an open world game could be. Yes, that's uh, all. That's all. But but they also because again, this isn't anything new. But they seem to think that it is something new, so that's why they had to create their own term for it. Right. Uh, all that makes me really worried about this game. <laughs> Because then you just look at the other games that are out there that are similar to what you're trying to achieve and then you can iterate on it. You know, the ones that do things good and the ones that do things bad so that you can know what to do and what to avoid and what, what to iterate off of. Um, yeah. I feel like it's... I, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about it. I, 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 I've, I've had an open mind for a while about this thing, but uh, now I'm... I, 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 this, this made me a little worried. Because of how weird and spotty the open world the, the, with the zone elements thrown in. I don't know. It's just, I feel like, yeah, they're definitely overcomplicating it for no real reason. Yeah, it's really you know, not. I'm, I'm, sh- I'm sure it's not that bad. I'm, look, best case scenario, it's just a regular ass open world and it plays fine. And all of this was for nothing. And they right. just overcomplicated it because, you know, they felt like they had to. Like, look, game, yeah. game development is very hard. Yes. Um, but I, I mean, it can't be th- this difficult to design a fucking good Sonic game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they really, really keep can. just, they really, it, I feel like it would be difficult to make them as bad as they've been making them. <laughs> you know, I feel like they're trying yeah. at this point. <laughs> I know. With the way Sonic Frontiers was, I feel like they they were, they, they, how could how could they look at the past Sonic games and be like, okay, let's take all of what's wrong with the 3D ones and put them all in one game? And, but what kills me is that they delayed this game a full year. <laughs> they missed the 30th anniversary because they wanted to get this game as good as possible. So they already delayed this game a year. Mm-hmm. So they truly believe in this game and they want this game that like they want this game to be good. I I want this game to be good. Yeah. But I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. No, as as everybody should be when it comes to a 3D Sonic game. I mean, the first indication, the first thing that scared me was when they straight up said like uh we need to charge $60 for it even if it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> they basically just fucking came out and said that. Yeah. The first mistake with Sonic Frontiers, we charged too little. We knew it was bad and we charged too little. We should know it's bad and charge uh, a normal amount. <laughs> anyway, that's our Sonic rant for the day. Hey, yes. Origins comes out tomorrow. You should check it out. Looks pretty yes. good. I've heard it's actually pretty good. All, uh, all of its weird DLC and pre-order shit aside. Uh, anyway, uh, we got more news like YouTuber ends Metroid Prime music covers. 
After yes. guess who? After guess who gave him a little trouble? Another YouTuber specializing in creating covers and remixes of classic Nintendo hits uh, has sworn off the practice going forward after Nintendo's lawyers called to request the removal of nine videos. Uh, Cinemax, who who has a total of 6,000 subscribers, uh, posted a video on his channel addressing the issues, thanks to Video Game Chronicles, stating that a lawyer representing Nintendo called him on May 31st and asked him to take down nine videos related to Metroid Prime from the channel. Uh, quote, I'm really disappointed in Nintendo that they would force me to take down these videos because they want compulsory licenses. Uh, I think it's important to point out that this only applies to music that's copyrighted by Nintendo. My research videos about the music for Metroid Prime, as well as music done in the style of Kenji Yamaoto, uh, those things are all okay because that's not copyrighted Nintendo music. However, re a recreation cover or just a cover in general of any sort of remix uh, that unfortunately cannot be done without compulsory licenses. Uh, Cinemax goes on to say that he'd rather Nintendo had taken over the monetization of his videos rather than remove them entirely as they had been done with a as they had done with a couple of others unrelated content uh, from his channel due to the fact that he only does this work for fun and not for money. Uh, why can't Nintendo go down this route, he says? Why can't Nintendo do this like everyone else? Why does my recreation cover uh, have to be removed when the song is based off when the song is based off of has never been any has never seen any sort of official soundtrack release. It's obvious that there's a strong market and demand for Nintendo to release this music outside of the game. Uh, it was written for Nintendo can easily capitalize on this market, but they refuse to do so. Uh, this sit whole situation has left a really bad taste in my mouth. And once I finish editing these Metroid videos that are currently in the pipeline, there's only a couple left. I'm done. Uh, it's certainly not the first case of a YouTuber being forced to remove their Nintendo-related content after strikes from the company itself. Most recently, uh, Doxy Prime revealed that it had received over 500 copyright claims from Nintendo, forcing the removal of a significant chunk of content. Uh, yeah. So, wait. These are two different YouTubers, right? Yeah, yeah. Cin Cinemax yeah. and and Doxy's Prime. There's a that's yeah. the all. These are only recent cases. This happens like every other week. Nintendo yeah. friggin' do and and think about the ones you don't hear about. Yes. You know, like like this yeah. happens all the fucking time. Uh, Nintendo is incredibly litigious with stuff like this. I, I, what's most shocking about this story is that they called him. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I just don't understand because they're covers. You know, there are droves of YouTube channels that specialize in covering video game music. I think the most popular or most famous, at least, is Overclock Remix, OC Remix. Mm -hmm. They have countless Nintendo covers yeah. on their channel. Granted, majority of them are completely rearranged, like they do orchestral versions or techno versions or, like, hard rock versions of Nintendo songs. So maybe that's what makes them get by i mean i'm not sure i've never heard of cinemax's stuff i don't know if they're straight covers like one-to-one -one covers or if they you know he does take some artistic license with them um but the fact remains that like i don't understand why this got the attention of nintendo's lawyers and what it means for other people who do stuff like this D didn't didn't well, somebody didn't a group that do do a cover just win a grammy like a music, like like a, like a video game cover. Yes, yes, actually. Yeah. What was the cover? I I, I forgot. It, it was it Metroid. Uh, it was Kirby. I think it was, oh, Kirby. it was Kirby. Kirby. Yeah. So like, what the fuck? Imagine imagine they win a Grammy and then they get a cease and desist. <laughs> yeah. Me like my first thought is maybe there maybe he had samples in in the, in the song like yeah what else would trigger it other than just doing a search and manually copywriting something. Yeah, I don't know, man. 8-Bit Big Band covered Meta Knight. Uh, Meta yeah. Knight's Revenge. Uh, and it was great. That was a great cover. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. And, and like he said, uh, Nintendo doesn't do anything with the, this, this music that they have. Um, even the fucking Pokemon company showed them up because they released yeah. uh, Swana. They released... Um, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, they released the music of that, a library of music from that for free to download and use. And I've been using it in some of my videos because of that. 
Um, they since took that down. You can't download them anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you could still use them because it's still part of my videos. Um, and I think they put up a different Pokemon games music. So I'm going to fucking download that and add it to my library of yeah. music I can use. Um, I'm not saying Nintendo needs to make it free and open for you to use, but make a fucking music channel or even just yeah. release it in some way. People would buy CDs with, with video game music on it. Put it on fucking yeah. Spotify. Make a I was gonna say. Make a I, I every time I stream, I I go to uh uh chill video game music and I click the N64 one. It's a big, it's a it's a yeah. three hour long uh video of all chill N64 music. Fucking put that on Spotify, you'll make a bunch of money. Yeah, I was gonna say there was there was a period of time when like Capcom put all of their games music on Spotify. Square put all the Final Fantasy music on Spotify. <laughs> Sega has a lot of Sonic soundtracks on Spotify now. I mean, it, it doesn't take, you know, that much time or energy to put your music on Spotify or Apple Music or whatnot. You know, Nintendo knows, like, the power of its music. So yep. why they're not utilizing it to this extent is beyond me. I, I understand like not wanting to put effort into something, but literally do anything. Like like all yeah. like all of your all of the art you've created in the past is just fizzling out and dying for no reason. Yeah, like like every every other month we get drip fed a game on Nintendo Switch Online, like mm -hmm. just 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 give us what we we want to play the games we want to give you money just let us do it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and that's without even talking about how they they copyright strike fucking everything that they that they see yeah. on on YouTube, which is already a a, a problem for creators and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't gotten a Nintendo copyright claim in a while, but uh, n you know, I almost never get them on uh, the main channel because I avoid shit like that. But mm -hmm. on the podcast channel, all the time, if I like play a trailer, sometimes it'll just be copyrighted. Yeah, um, I have a lot of old vods that are streams on this podcast channel, and uh, every once in a while, I'll get a notification from an old stream that got got uh c and d which is hard which is very bad for the channel like yeah. i should just delete all those old vods but i just don't i just don't care because the thing is if i delete all those vods people are going to be like oh I, why'd you delete those vods it's like you know we're <laughs> watching them anyway yeah but i just don't want i don't want the trouble i don't want the trouble game freak has a lot of pokemon music collections on itunes yeah, I think the Pokemon company has done more for games preservation than Nintendo has. Yeah. Uh, the only thing the Pokemon company is missing is fucking re-releasing their games. Like, yes. Let us play Pokemon Red, how it was originally intended to be played. That might have something to do with Nintendo because they're publishing the games, but... Yes, that's a that's a whole other like invest investigation that we're not capable of doing. I would love to. I would love to do that. Uh, okay. What other news we got? Treasure Van. Wilson play likes it a lot. Yes, very good. Uh, it, it's not getting DLC, but it might. Uh, depending on how things go, there could be a chance of seeing uh, Shredder's Revenge DLC in an IGN interview with Attribute Games and narrative designer uh, Yannick Bel Belzil. Uh, it initially seemed like there would be no alternate costumes. Uh, the suggestion seemed that the developer would prefer to make another playable character. However, at, after the fact, .emu CEO and executive producer Cyril Imbert took to Twitter to confirm an add-on wouldn't be impossible. Uh, here's Imbert's statement. It highlighted that whether or not Shredder's Revenge DLC would happen depended on how well the game sells. Uh, some clarification here. This is from Cyril Imbert. Uh, there won't be alternative costumes at launch, and we don't have any DLC plans so far. But we never said never. It will depend on many factors like the game's reception and the ideas and feedback that the Austin community will send us. Uh, it wouldn't be unheard of for a .emu game to receive a DLC after launch. For example, Streets of Rage 4 ended up getting uh, eventually the Mr. X Nightmare add-on. That made Ethel, Max, and Shiva playable and introduced a survival mode. Uh, that's kind of a shame because I wanted some more characters. But yes. uh, I mean, 
the game's getting very good reviews. It's selling very well. It's trending on Twitter every day. Mm -hmm. People are playing the hell out of this game. People are loving this game. I think you give them some time. I think they're going to I think they're going to try and find a way to do DLC on this. There's no way they're going to, you know, kill this hype train just as it gets out of the station. Do they um, have alternate costumes? No. No. I, I, I wasn't I really, expecting I think, alternate costumes. That's I think the original thing. interview with um, the designer, Yannick Be uh, Belzell, he said something about, like, how he would have loved to have put the turtles in their trench coats. Like from the yeah, cartoon, yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Uh, I think this is something something about like how there's so much animation in the game already to do alternate costumes would be, you know, very difficult because they have to add that on to all the other animations. Yeah, to I add another expect character. That. Yeah, but um, yeah, adding another character, I feel like would be uh, yeah, it'd be more difficult. Well, I don't know, because like because like adding an outfit would be like adding a whole other character. Right. Why not just make a whole other fucking character instead? Yeah. Um, what's this Mr. X shit? That was DLC for Streets of Rage 4. You play as like Some Mr. The X. Guys, I think. Like not not Resident Evil Mr. X. Oh, okay. I'm trying to figure that out. I was like, what the no, hell? I, no, I believe it's uh Mr. X is also a character in Streets of Rage. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I would, I would, I would love some more wacky characters in it. I, yes. I, I feel, I feel like that would, like, like, of course, playing as the turtles, you know, that's great. But like, obviously, having the like when they announced like April and 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 uh, 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 Splinter, I was like, holy fuck! Yeah, <laughs> that like, was like that, up like actually wowed me. Possibilities, and then Casey. Yeah. So like, you know, the the punk frogs are in the game, but you can't play as them. To be able to play as them would be cool. Uh, we talked about it last week. Usagi Yojimbo will yeah. be perfect for this game. There's some weird licensing with him, but I think they could get it done. Um, yeah, anything. <laughs> Just, uh, level packs. Do freaking level packs. That would be fun. What, what Doesn't have the, to be characters. What are the punk frogs? Uh, they were mutant frogs, and they were named after uh, people in history, like Napoleon Bonafrog and... Uh, Genghis Frog. That was the other one. I never heard There's of these. There's three people. of them. Yeah. Napoleon Bonafrog, Genghis Frog, and I forgot who the third one was. Are they also ninjas? Uh no. They are they like Casey Jones? They're just good at fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think they're they're just, you know, they're mutant frogs, so of course they're good at fighting. Uh, th this seems like uh they were created in retaliation of uh uh, what's that game? Battle Battle Toads. Yeah. I mean, probably. <laughs> Very weird. They they were created for the original eighty seven uh TV show, and that show ran for oh. like ten years. So it's very possible that they, you know, somebody saw Battletoads and was like, "Yeah, oh, fuck those guys." <laughs> okay, very weird. All right, well, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, what other news do we have? We have uh, Final Fantasy. We got to talk about Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> well, I wanted. There were, and I looked. I looked. Nobody, there was a Final Fantasy VII anniversary uh, stream last week. Uh huh. And no, nobody did a recap of the entire stream. Wow. Nobody. <laughs> like, they just did, like, they broke out, like, all the different news and made it individual articles. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about everything that was announced. I think um, Final Fantasy VII Remake is coming to Steam, it'll be deck compatible. Uh, Crisis Core remake is coming soon. Uh, but the big news, I think, and I think everyone will agree, uh, was they announced the part two of the Final Fantasy VII remake. Uh, it'll be called Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and it's coming to PS5 in winter 2023. That's uh, good. They also announced that the Final Fantasy VII remake, the overall Final Fantasy VII remake, will be a trilogy of games. So part one was remake, 
Part two coming next year will be Rebirth. And part three will be re something <laughs> whenever that comes out. <laughs> um, now, I think that was expected that it was going to be a trilogy. I mean, at first, when the, before the game even came out, we were like, we thought it was going to be one game. And then the game came out and they're like, jokes on you. This isn't the whole game. Well, no, I think they, they said it was going to they said it was going to be episodic. But I but, think but, when but we the, think episodic, we think like the Telltale games where they're like in small chunks released well, over that, that's, the span of like two years. That's the thing. When this was being developed, Square thought that episodic games were going to be the norm. That's yeah, why true. That's why Hitman released in a million episodes. And then they realized, oh, wait, nobody wants that. <laughs> yeah. Um. So when they said, yeah, when they said episodic, that's where our heads went. And then they, it looked like they went against that because they were releasing the fucking uh, remake as one disc. Yeah. And then the game came out and it was like, jokes on you. It's only part of the game. Uh, and I, then, and then we thought it was half, but I kind of like made it, sense for them to just do a trilogy. Yeah. I mean, when you say final fantasy seven remake, mm -hmm. It assume one would assume, especially one who doesn't follow games like we do, uh, one would assume that's the whole game. <laughs> that they yes. remade the whole game. <laughs> that's yes, yes. And it's especially crazy that uh we're not we've gotten part two. We're getting part two of a remake of one game next year, when by the same time next year, Capcom would have remade Three Resident Evil games in total. So, so, so this is even made even more confusing because uh, this thing that they have at the end here. So I guess this is everything they announced. You have Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade. Oh. Yeah, that's like the DLC for now. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yes. Okay. And then Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion is out this winter. Which is yes. something completely different. Crisis Core was like a side game to Final Fantasy VII. That didn't come out until years after Final Fantasy VII. Right. I remember that because there was like shooting. And I was like, oh, cool. Maybe yeah. I'll be interested in this. And then I never got it. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the next one of the Final Fantasy VII remake. And that is next winter. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's the one that they announced that was like chibi Final Fantasy VII? Hmm. Whoop. I don't know. I'll have to give me a second. I'm checking out Reunion. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is going to be on Nintendo Switch. Final Fantasy 7. This just looks like Final Re Final Fantasy... Crisis Core Final Fantasy 7 Reunion looks like Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Yeah. Uh, oh, and no. Uh, Cr Crisis Core was a PSP game. This one Crisis is a Core. PSP. I think there's got to be multiple Crisis Cores. Because I'm remember i thinking of a PS2 game. No, I know the game you're thinking of. The one where you play as uh, Vincent and he, like, shoots people. Yeah. What is that's, that? Uh, that's Dirge of Cer Cerberus. <laughs> is that not called Crisis Core? No, Crisis Core uh, was a PSP action RPG. The game you're thinking of is Dirge of Cerberus. I've never fucking heard that series of words before in my life. What's a dirge? Uh, I know what it is, but I don't know the definition of it. <laughs> this is this is this is the character I'm thinking of. I that's not the cover I'm thinking of. But this this kind of Final Fantasy Seven. Okay, I might, I might be yeah. thinking of Dirge. Of, I might be thinking of Dirge of Cerberus. You're thinking of Dirge of Cerberus. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? Remember, it's Square, so they have stupid names for everything. Yes, of course, of course. Okay. Uh, a dirge is like a song of mourning. Okay. Yeah. I'll add that to my vocabulary. <laughs> Uh, so 
the chat said it was a mobile game that I'm thinking of. Ever Crisis is the one that had the, the chibi, the chibi style. Okay. Ever Crisis, final, what is this, freaking Kingdom Hearts? <laughs> With all these uh, names? So what the yeah. hell is Ever Crisis now? And how come it's like chibi and then they go into the fighting and then it's not anymore? I guess that's like what Final Fantasy was originally like, right? Yeah. Yeah, basically. Okay, weird. I don't know, man. It's a turn-based uh, yeah. Final Fantasy VII remake, so it's it's, it's so it's just Final Fantasy. So VII. it's Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> Is this Final Fantasy VII? But like. This is like Final Fantasy VII, but the style is original Final Fantasy VII, but the graphics are like better. <laughs> I hate they're really they're really milking Final Fantasy VII. They really are. Like it's amazing. Like, and, and please, chat, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't necessarily think Final Fantasy VII is anybody's favorite Final Fantasy game. But it's the most popular Final Fantasy mm. game. So that's why they milk it for all it's worth. You know? Uh, Dragon Armor says, Ever Crisis is a turn-based Final Fantasy VII, but retelling all the Final Fantasy VII stories. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> isn't Final Fantasy VII fucking turn-based? <laughs> the remake isn't. No, the remake is like uh, some action hybrid thing. Right. This this looks like original. This looks like if if they took the original game and remade it, yeah, which is stupid because they did that. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like they remade it in a different way than they already remade it. That's what it looks yeah. like, and they're releasing them both at the same time, so it's even more confusing. But I guess this is mobile, so you can play it on mobile. Well, they did yeah. release Final Fantasy VII on mobile. Yes, and but uh, it's not original- remade. It's just the it's like the ROM. The original Final Fantasy VII is on Switch, so that's mobile. And Final Fantasy VII Remake will be Steam Deck compatible, so that's mobile as well. It's technically the PC port is what we're getting. Right. Is what we have on mobile and and on uh, on yes. Switch, but it's like the old PC port. Yes. So you can play. Listen, if you've ever wanted to play Final Fantasy VII before, there are so many different ways you can play it. This is for all the people who complain that they were changing the battle systems to Silent Mongoose. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, this has loot boxes also. Of course. It I don't does. know how you can shoehorn loot boxes into Final Fantasy VII. Oh, I'm sure there's a there's a way. I'm sure they can find a way. Every t- every time you beat a you beat a random battle, you get a you get a loot box. You can also, trade it in for a better one. Also, how come Sephiroth is like hanging out with you? Like, what's that about? I didn't know that happened. He's just know. like he's just like chilling with you, and then you fight him at the end. I don't know, man. Like it, like I, this game is like so like impenetrable to an outsider. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a flashback to ne- Nebelheim. Okay, of course it was. Yes, I will say like. Sephiroth, I know this about Sephiroth. He has been voiced in English by two different Superman actors, which is <laughs> very bizarre to me. Uh, thank you, Conga Stu, for the four months. Glad to catch you boys live again. Glad that you're here. Um, uh, let's talk about Activision Blizzard. A new update, yes, of the, of their. Uh, of of their uh, terrible uh, company. <laughs> yeah, good news, everyone. Activision Blizzard has investigated Activision Blizzard and it found that Activision Blizzard didn't do anything wrong. Oh, wow. and the media is lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> Amid all the news on Overwatch 2 and Diablo Immortal, Activision Blizzard has filed a document with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission in which it affirms that after an internal investigation, it concluded its own board did not fail to act when presented with allegations of harassment. Contrary to many of the allegations, the board and its ex- and its external advisors have determined that there is no evidence to suggest that Activision Blizzard senior executives ever intentionally ignored, 
or attempted to downplay the instances of gender harassment that occurred and were reported, Activision Blizzard wrote in the filing. <laughs> the report does acknowledge that there were problems within the company and that such a conclusion does little to address the concerns of those harmed. Indeed, a single instance of someone feeling diminished at Activision Blizzard is one too many, it wrote. However, a report from one of the consultants Activision Blizzard engaged uh, to review harassment filings and the company's responses, the document said, based on the volume of reports, the amount of misconduct reflected is comparatively low for a company the size of Activision Blizzard. It's kind, it's kind of strange to say that in one breath, one is too many, and then cite a consultant saying that it could have been worse. So, so like, another another thing is even if the amount of complaints were comparatively low, it doesn't, like, like quantity isn't really important. Right. The, 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 I don't want to say quality. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the, the, the like 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 the, like there could be really fucked up complaints that yeah. that overshadow like five small complaints you know so like the mm -hmm. quantity of complaints does not matter <laughs> yes the fact that there were more than one complaint yes. should have been enough to investigate and completely revamp the way you do business right if necessary Right. But no. <laughs> uh, later it says, it must be said that the company has been the subject of an unrelenting barrage of media criticism that attempts to paint the entire company and its many innocent employees with the stain of a, of a very small portion of our employee population who engaged in bad behavior and were disciplined for it, the company wrote. Much of this originated with the highly inflammatory made-for-press uh, allegations of the DFEH, the uh, Department of Fair Employment and Housing. So, I mean, the, the 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 whole thing is that, first of all, not all of these employees were disciplined. Right. And second of uh, all, it was your fucking CEO. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, that's... It wasn't just a, a, a small subject section of employees... It was your whole ass CEO. Yeah. <laughs> when, when, so. when, like, you know, a, when a few bad apples includes uh, the roots of the tree itself. Yes. It, it's time to, like, plant a new tree in a new field. Yeah, no, you, you, yeah, no, this is completely warranted. The yeah. fact that there's still damage controlling this is is insane just just yeah. fucking resign you have enough money yeah is, is he really i mean yeah i guess he's still working there he's still he's, he's still, still making there. He's more still, money he's still the ceo yeah yeah the 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 government needs to step in and fucking do something yeah. this guy should not be working there he should not be in charge of all of these people when he's still yeah that much of a monster absolutely i mean even vince mcmahon is stepping down <laughs> right now <laughs> it's about time yeah i mean he's not doing a good job of stepping down he he was on raw and smackdown and basically said welcome to the show i'm this mcmahon and then walked <laughs> away even though he's being like investigated for paying out an employee he had an affair with who hasn't you know apparently everybody everybody fucking has done that apparently yeah um but this is not the worst uh, Activision Blizzard news that we oh, have. Oh, there's worse than sexual harassment. There's worse. There's much worse. Sure. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 and 4 remake was planned before the Vicarious Vision mer merger from Tony Hawk himself. This is the most offensive piece this of Activision news I've Activision ever heard in my life. Done. I'm never buying another Activision game again unless it's Tony uh, Hawk's Pro Skater 3 and 4. <laughs> After publisher Activision Blizzard and developer Vicarious Visions uh, released the well-received remake, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, speculation naturally arose uh, that a 3 and 4 remake would come next. According to the legendary skater Tony Hawk himself, that was the plan until the merger of Vicarious Visions into Blizzard cut those plans short. In a live stream with Andy uh, THPS, Hawk explained... Uh, even up till the release date of Tony Hawk's uh, 1 and 2, we were going to do 3 and 4. 
and then Vicarious kind of got absorbed, and then Activision was looking for other developers, and then it was over. Uh, Hawk went on to elaborate. The truth of it is they were trying to find someone to do three and four, but they just just didn't really trust anyone the way they did Vicarious. Uh, so they took other pitches from other studios, like what would you do with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater? And they didn't like anything they heard. And that was it. Uh, it was announced in January last year that Vicarious Visions was being fully absorbed into Blizzard, where they would collectively develop Diablo 2 Resurrected. The merger was announced to be uh, officially complete this past April. It's disappointing and a little frustrating to confirm that Vicarious Visions intended to develop Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 and 4 prior to the decision to merge it into Blizzard, especially if Activision had no backup plan for how to continue the franchise without this team. So... Uh, this was during a live stream with this, this guy, Andy THPS was streaming with Tony Hawk and, and I saw the yeah. clip and Tony just lets it fly. He doesn't give a shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it made me curious, like, who's this guy? He's gotta be like a, like a designer on the game or something. Uh, mm -hmm. turns out he was the senior, uh, it says senior designer, Vicarious Vision Studios and Blizzard Entertainment. And oh, here- wow. So he's, 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 he knows, he knows about what, <laughs> what happened with the game. He knows that yeah. they were going to make a yeah. three and four and then they, all of this bureaucratic bullshit happened and they, and they dropped it. But fucking Tony Hawk is on the stream and he could just say whatever he wants because he's Tony Hawk. So he just like, this guy knows what happened and doesn't want to say it. But Tony Hawk's yeah. like, I don't give a fuck. I'm Tony Hawk. This is what <laughs> happened. Fuck those guys. We wanted to do it. They didn't want to do it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, th I, that's that's fantastic. I think in the clip, he's this guy Andy Thps makes it sound like he didn't know that that was what happened, or he seems like he's just being quiet. Yeah. Um, and it's possible. There's a small chance that he actually didn't know that yeah. they were taking pitches to other developers. Um, mm -hmm. but no, it sounds like he knows he just didn't want to say anything because he was afraid yeah. of losing his job at Activision. But, uh, uh, Tony Hawk doesn't, he's Tony Hawk. What are they going to do? Yeah. Call it friggin', uh, Bob Burnquest's pro skater. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I, I heard it did good. The, the, the one and two remake did good. Apparently. Yeah, it did very well. Got great reviews. It sold very well. And I remember saying at the time when they like, when they said that Vicarious Visions was now going to be part of Blizzard and they're going to work on Diablo from now on, like, why? When you, the obvious thing to do was to have them do another Tony Hawk game. You know, Activision can't leave well enough alone. They they had an obvious success, but the only games they care about is Call of Duty and like a handful of Blizzard titles. So push everything over there makes we have to have everybody working on these four games and that's it that you know that, the crash died after a successful uh relaunch and RIP. spyro died after a successful relaunch you know now everyone's working on call of duty or diablo or fucking overwatch that's exactly what happened was they could make another three and four and be successful in the grand scheme of things or they could make a studio that does one of their cash cows Yes. and make more money that's how they see it they don't care about the fans of any of their franchises they only care about the fans of the franchise that make them the most mo i don't even know if they right. care about those fans but they care about Probably making them the most money possible so if they have a developer that can't make a fucking call of duty game they don't want them <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what happened to with crash says jumanji uh they just they they, they make they what put happened? out the, the compilation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one, two, and three. Uh, then they did a uh, crash, crash team racing remake. Then they did crash four. And I believe that studio got moved over to call of duty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Toys for Bob. Yes. Yeah. They're doing, uh, they got moved over to call of duty. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so there's rumors of a new crash coming out. Apparently, there's a whole bunch of controversy that everybody's been rumoring about a new crash for like ever, and it never happens. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, everybody at, at every developer at Activision is working on Call of Duty, or in this case, I guess Diablo. Yeah. Um. So, and you know what? Everybody's pissed off at Diablo Immortal, 
but I bet it's making them a fuck ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. it, it doesn't help when everyone's like, man, Diablo Immortals got too many microtransactions and loot boxes and shit. But the game's actually pretty good. <laughs> I hear it's good. I hear that it yeah, actually has so good like I. motion controls and stuff. Yeah, I heard it's I heard it's excellent, but like just make sure you don't buy anything. <laughs> just I just stop buying Activision games. Yeah. Seriously. What, what was oh well, I guess Call of Duty's really the only one that I care about. <laughs> Tony Hawk was the last Activision game I bought, honestly. Mm-hmm. And I don't I'm not gonna buy I'm not gonna buy another one until this alleged Microsoft deal actually goes through. Well, Will, you might have another Activision game that you might be interested in. Have you ever heard of a little game called Overwatch? Yes, and I, what sucks is like I like Overwatch. I liked, you know, when I played it back in the day, I thought it was fun. And the cartoons they have, the little animations they yeah, have, great. Right? Yeah. Little animations, I call them. They're like whole ass like movies. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Nintendo tweeted, Overwatch 2 is coming to Nintendo Switch on October 4th as a free-to-play experience featuring new heroes, maps, and modes. Pre-purchase the Watchpoint pack today and receive exclusive content to get you ready to hit the ground running on day one. I think this was pretty obvious, but it wasn't officially uh, reported. Like, they didn't officially announce it. Uh, But yeah, the game's free-to-play, and it's going to be on Switch. I guess day yes. one. I guess October fourth is day one. Yeah. Uh, is it going to be cross play? I that? certainly hope so. Is yeah, the original especially the game like play? Overwatch. No, um, I don't think it was. There's some weird issues with the Switch specifically because uh, yeah. I think it was Fortnite that had problems with the frame rate. It was tied to DPS and like uh, yeah. Having the like you would like if you only if you're playing at 30 frames per second, you might damage somebody slower than somebody who's playing at like 60 frames a second. Uh, So maybe there's some issues with that. Uh, Maybe it'll throw you in mobile lobbies. I don't know. Um, Also of note, I think we talked about this already. Warzone's going to come to mobile, which probably I I suspect that's going to be that's going to come to switch also. Yeah. Um, Uh. Overwatch 2 is going to have cross progression. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I care about that more than cross platform play. <laughs> it'll it'll have cross platform play, yeah. That's great. I'm um, uh, I like that. Even though I just said don't buy Activision Blizzard games. Uh here well, I am talking free. about wanting to play one. That's true, it's free. Just it's don't free. spend any money. It's free. Yeah. <laughs> Which I also can't promise because I've been I the amount of money I've spent in Valorant has been very shameful. <laughs> If that game had loot boxes, I might have a huge problem on my hands. It's always hard, um, especially when it comes to video games. Like, we say don't buy Activision games. Uh, The problem is there are all the employees who actually work on the game. Who actually, like, put their time and energy and efforts into making these games. Uh, The employees who walk out every time Activision, you know does something stupid the employees who risk their jobs you know standing up to the toxic work environment the employees who uh you know almost couldn't unionize to protect themselves but successfully did uh you know when we say don't buy their their games you run the risk of forgetting about them and because they're the ones who will ultimately suffer um but at the same time they don't really see much benefit from the sales of this anyway. It's just sure. a day job for it's more or less just a day job for them. They don't get the residuals. All the residuals go to the top. And those are the people who are going to be safe anyway. Sometimes so. there's like bonuses for how successful a game is and stuff, yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean I don't know. And also they like fire whole studios like if they don't I mean, okay. Sometimes games are very successful and they fire everybody from the studio anyway because there's just turn yeah. there's just a, they just turn that's just how yeah. games are made they just turn over like like really hard. Um but if it's managed well they don't have to do that. Yeah. Um I don't know. It's 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 a it's a little song and dance whether or not you want to support a a developer or 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 a publisher based on the actions of of the of the of the higher ups, yeah. Um, 
Just if you don't like a game, if you look at a game and you don't think you're going to like it, don't buy it. How about yeah. that? Plain and simple. Um, and of course, buying used and pre-owned, the developer doesn't get that money, but you still get to play the game. True. Uh, here's here's a here's a weird thing. Now we we like Aspire. Yes, for for a few reasons because they because they've been remaking some great Star Wars games, some of the yes. best Star Wars games. Also, they sponsored me. Uh, yes. but looks like they did something kind of fucked up. <laughs> Aspire's latest Nintendo Switch release, Star Wars The Knights of the Old Republic 2, apparently has a bug in it that's preventing players from completing the game. And in exchange on social media, a player reveals how they experienced a game crash after the uh, Basilisk crash cutscene when landing on Odoron, and that there's no way to complete the game in the current state. Aspire replied back, noting how it was aware there is no way to complete the game currently. Uh, the Aspire tweet reads, Yes, we are aware, and our dev team is working on delivering a patch as soon as possible. We apologize for the inconvenience and appreciate your patience in the meantime. Uh, the issue will be addressed in the next patch but, patch, but there is currently no ETA on when exactly it will roll out to players on the Nintendo Switch. So it still doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> and, and apparently this event that crashes the game is halfway through the game? I believe it's like not even so. at the end of the game. So yeah. you can only play half of this fucking game. <laughs> yes. Um, so I've, I've played as in terms of like the Aspire uh, Star Wars ports. I played uh, the Jedi, uh, the Jedi Knight games, Outcast and Academy mm -hmm. and playing them. It was obvious that they were PC ports. They were ports of the PC game to switch warts and all mm -hmm. like they, I don't like, I had enjoyed my time with them, but it was clear that the games were not optimized for Switch. They were still the games from the early 2000s. It sounds like the same situation with KOTOR and KOTOR 2 occurred, where they just took the original PC port and just put it over to the Switch. And KOTOR 2 was notoriously buggy when it originally launched. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like they missed the big one. <laughs> So I'll I'll say that yeah it did seem like a port up to the like like Jedi I played a lot of Jedi uh Knight 2. Um yes. Uh one of the biggest tells was you could plug a keyboard and mouse in and it could like kind of work but like you yeah. can't map the controls. So like you can kind of use a keyboard so it's like it's it's the PC port. Um yeah. Also there's like some weird control things like uh, uh I, like the sensitivities like made for a mouse and stuff. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a great game. I'm happy that it's on yeah. the Switch. No, no, absolutely. Um, and the same thing with uh, Republic Commando I played, and that plays very well, but that kind of yeah. plays more like a PS2 game. Yeah. Uh, but but again, it's a port, and it plays like the PS2 game. <laughs> like, they yeah. didn't really do anything after that. Um, so, yeah, this they just left a bug in. How yeah. did this get past uh, quality assurance is the question. Yeah, how did because this get past certification? That's a, okay, so there's quality assurance within the company. Yeah. Like like the company has to QA test this to make sure that the game can actually be played. How could you skip this? It's, yeah. a, it's a mandatory thing in the game. Uh, and also... Yeah, certification. Every one of the major consoles requires the games to be certified to be on their storefront. And yes. I recently learned the developer or the publisher has to pay for that certification. Every yes. time you upload something to the eShop, you're paying Nintendo to certify it to make sure that it works. So Nintendo mm -hmm. got a bunch of money to certify this game that it could work on the eShop, and they didn't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they just didn't do that. Yeah. This also goes back to the whole cyberpunk issue. Cyberpunk yes. should not have ever passed certification, but I believe that it did because it was made by a major company and it was highly anticipated. So they were like, people are yeah. going to buy it anyway, and we trust these guys. They always make great games. Yeah. So this was a weird oversight on multiple levels. This is a, a game that you are buying that don't work right. Yeah. Especially like. 
I mean, I feel like it's different if it's like a new game because like you don't know how long that game's supposed to be. Maybe it's just supposed yeah. to end then. <laughs> but like this is a game we know and have played for many years. So yeah. we know we're buying it with the intent to play 30 hours of it. And now we can and only play 15. And it's a game that like works on other platforms. Like yeah. you buy it on Steam and it works. You buy it on, uh, you can buy the original Xbox uh, versions of KOTOR 1 and 2 and the Jedi Knight games and Republic Commando on Xbox One right now through backwards compatibility. And those work fine. Those have been patched to work fine and run in 4K if you're on a Series X and S. So, yeah, this is this is a really big black eye. <laughs> very strange. This is a... Uh... Yeah, very. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's very weird. Like, like I, I've, I haven't seen anything wrong with Aspire, other than like yeah. they really are just farting games over to the Switch. They're like doing almost yeah. no work to them. Um, I mean, and this, at this least proves, they're putting the games. At least they're putting the games on Switch. At least they're doing it. Yeah, I'm happy that it's just being done, yeah. but. This is showing that they really aren't doing anything to the games. They're just fucking farting them over there. Yeah. Uh, Circus says, Aspire has botched every launch so far in some way like this with major bugs. Jedi Academy multiplayer servers were being introduced by PC, were being intruded by PC players at launch who trashed on the new console players and they took weeks to patch it. There's still a lot of issues with that situation today. I remember that. Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah, uh, Jedi because Jedi Academy has mul has online multiplayer right on Switch, and I they they basically made it a you know cross play, uh, which meant all the PC players would come in and just wreck house because they have an they unfair advantage because they have a better version of the game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that sounds like they just farted the game over. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. Yeah. Uh, well, I, listen, I've only ever played. Jedi Knight 2 and uh, uh, Republic Commando. And I had a great time with those. Yeah. With I Jedi Knight Jedi... 2, you can kind of tell that it was just a PC port. Yeah. Republic Commando both... kind of just worked fine. I played both uh, Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academy, and I had fun with them. Like, I enjoyed my time with them, but it was clear that they were PC games originally with yeah. minimal work done to make them work on a console. Yeah. And now we know you need to do a little work. <laughs> Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, apparently there's controller shortages for Xbox. Yeah. So it's not just consoles that you can't find anywhere. Microsoft has acknowledged a shortage of Xbox controllers after a, many major retailers sold out completely this month. Uh, at the time of writing, major retailers in multiple regions are completely sold out of Xbox wireless controllers, and the peripheral seems to be particularly scarce across Europe. In the UK, there are currently no controllers in any color in stock at retailers Game, Smith's, Argo, Curry's, or even the official Microsoft Store. Amazon UK is one of the few retailers with with a stock of carbon black controllers, uh, which, it, which was newly added today. It was sold out yesterday. Third-party prices on Amazon for the black controllers start at £94, nearly double the official price. Uh, the situation appears to be similar in many regions with Reset Era forum users uh, discussing their difficulty finding the controllers in various countries, including Australia, France, the Netherlands, and Germany. Xbox Design Lab appears to still be taking orders from players wishing to buy and design customized controllers. Design Lab site state, uh, the Design Lab site continues to claim we aim to have the controller in your hands within 28 days of placing your order. It is not clear if this remains the case or if it hasn't been updated. Xbox confirmed the controller shortage uh, following an inquiry by VGC, uh, attributing it to supply distribution, uh, supply disruptions. Uh, we know it may be hard finding Xbox wireless controllers right now due to supply disruptions. Uh, we are working as fast as possible with our manufacturing and retail partners to improve this. Please check with your local retailer for availability. Uh, stock seems to be somewhat more uh, stock seems to be somewhat more readily available in the U.S. for now, um, with availability in the Microsoft Store and Best Buy. Although some sites such as Amazon and GameStop are currently only selling pre-owned controllers, suggesting supplies aren't plentiful in the region. 
Shortages of console hardware are nothing new in this generation. Global chip shortage has meant that both Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 have been in extremely short supply since the launch 19 months ago, with stock selling stock selling out almost as quickly as it arrives. Peripheral shortages have been less common, however, and it remains to be seen how quickly Xbox wireless controller supplies can be replenished to a level where they are readily available in all stores again. For now, anyone in Europe looking for an official Xbox wireless controller will have to either hope they get lucky and find one in stock somewhere, or go with the less straightforward method, uh, such as buying a customized controller via Design Lab. Have you seen the new Design Lab colors? It's fucking sick. Uh, I have not. I'm looking at you on screen right now. They got a lot of nice stuff. You could do metallic uh, buttons and shit. Like D-pad and shoulder buttons. Oh, wow. It's friggin' awesome. I uh, I don't want to buy any more controllers. <laughs> yeah. I have so many Xbox controllers. If they made this uh, Elite, I would, I would, I would for yes. sure get it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but I have enough freaking Xbox controllers. Uh, but even if I did do it, apparently I wouldn't get mine for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really strange that uh, uh, they're having issues on controllers. Yeah. Uh, f- I, yeah I'm surprised. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm not surprised because like, everything's slowing down and stuff. But this is the first time you're hearing like peripherals and major peripherals like a uh, controller being affected by it. And I think it's especially hard for the Xbox controller because that is, you know, probably the most versatile controller on the market because people use that for PC gaming. You can use that for your iPhone and your Apple TV. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, the Xbox controller is the most versatile controller you can get because it just works with everything. Um, yeah. Uh, it's weird because there's rumors now that PlayStation is working on a pro version of... Uh, or an elite version of the DualSense controller. Interesting. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I wonder... Well, I mean, PlayStation's got shortages of whole-ass consoles. So, so yeah. <laughs> I mean, they. I'm sure they have... They, I'm sure they're going to run into some shortages of the controllers as well at some point. Yeah. Um, anyway... It, it, also, you know what? I would buy a Design Lab controller if I could swap the D-pad with the thumbstick. That'd be crazy. Um. Anyway, uh, yeah, I I don't know if you'll get that from Microsoft because like that shape is the Microsoft shape, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, more controller news. We saw this right before we went live. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there's a new Sega Genesis controller that's officially licensed by Sega that works on a Sega Genesis. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, back when the Mega Drive or Genesis was first released, it came with a three-button pad, which in 1988 felt like the future. It wasn't square or blocky like the NES or Master System controllers, uh, but had a round, ergonomic shape, which was a more comfortable hold and it had an extra button. Uh, However, when the SNES arrived, it's clear that Sega's pad was no longer the cutting edge. Uh, Three action buttons, with three action buttons, it couldn't offer the same degree of control options, and when Street Fighter II hit the market, it changed things forever. Sega had to release a separate pad, uh, which had the required number of buttons for the game. That pad was also smaller and boasted an improved D-pad, and and it's the design that Sega has stuck with over the decades. Uh, However, accessory maker Retrobit which has already collaborated with Sega to produce officially licensed controllers in the past, uh, revealed that the old three-button pad is worthy of a revision. It is releasing the Big Six, an all-new pad which takes the original 88 design and adds three additional action buttons. So basically, what they did was they took the design of the original uh, Sega Genesis or Mega Drive three-button controller... And they added the three extra buttons on it to make it a full-size six-button controller. This was confusing to me, especially the way the article worded it. Uh, they made mm-hmm. it seem like they've never made a six-button before. Or the way it was worded made it seem like that to me. It says, however, right. accessory maker uh, Retrobit, dash, which has already collaborated with Sega to produce officially licensed controllers, feels that the old three-button pad is worthy of a revision. It's releasing the big six 
an all new pad, which takes on the original 1988 design. So wait, did they never make a three button one or they did? No, they must have. I know they've done the six button pads. Right. I remember I now sure. seeing it in like retro game stores. They sell the, the six button yeah. one. They must have because the six button is like the three button is like the Genesis controller that they sell for everything. Nintendo makes one. Sega put one in the mini consoles. Well, now they're, they're, you can you can get a six button controller that's as big as the three button controller, I guess. Yes. Uh, uh, and you can get a USB one uh, for work for PC and Switch. You can get a wireless one that comes with two dongles, one for USB and one for a Genesis. And you can get a wired one for your Sega Genesis. Oh, I thought it would be like a Bluetooth dongle that just works with a Switch or something. It's a 2.4 wireless gigahertz control. Uh, and it's USB. Segment. Does the USB work with Switch? Yes. Oh, that's very good. Uh, unlike these fucking N64 controllers I've been banging my head <laughs> against all week. These stupid goddamn things. The, 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 retro, the, 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 the retro Fighters one. Uh, the update, the firmware update just isn't working. And they don't have a firmware really? update for the wired one. So now I'm, I guess my next move is trying this, uh, the, the Hyperkin one. Because that has a firmware update. But when they release yeah. the firmware update, fucking thing don't work. So now it's been months, and I'll try it again and see if it works. Because i got to make a video. Um, They did not do a three-button controller. I'm on their website now. They only have six-button controllers for Genesis. Very weird. Unless it was, like, out of print. Yeah. But it sounds like they just didn't Maybe. do it at all. Yeah. There must have been a reason for that. Maybe Sega was like, no, just do the six-button well one. I feel, I mean, because the six button, like, that's the controller you want because that has all the buttons and it's necessary for a lot <laughs> of games. Um, yeah. I mean, I I do like the idea of this big six because it's the, it's the bigger size of the three button controller, but with the six button layout. Mm -hmm. Probably what Sega should have done a long time ago. See, see it's I nice that somebody's doing it. <laughs> I, I would always opt for the six button, but I never press yeah. the top buttons. <laughs> There's no games that I play that utilize that shit. Right. Er Edward Bova says they have an A button control. They have a controller for Genesis as well as the six button controller, but with Super Nintendo style R and L buttons. Is that the Switch Online controller he's talking about? Yeah, that would be made by Nintendo. Yeah. Oh this no! Wait, I think yes. Retro Bit does have a version of the Genesis controller with L and R buttons. Oh, yes. And and is that three buttons or six buttons? Six buttons. Okay. Well, then that doesn't solve anything, does it, Edward Bova? <laughs> um, Chris BX, thanks for being here and for the forty-six months and for doing our timestamps every week. Um, speaking of those controllers, did you see Joy Cons and Pro Controller will work natively with iOS sixteen? Yeah, I've been thinking about how to do a video about that but I don't really have anything. <laughs> You'd have to compare it to like how a DualShock and a, an Xbox controller work. Maybe I could uh, put Dolphin on yeah. on there and see how it works. I don't know. Yeah, what? Oh, yeah, I guess that would be Wii. I guess that would be Wii. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's all the news. Yes. Which means it's time for it's time for it's time for this. Quit of the week, quit of the week, quit of the week. Ah, god damn it! The tweet of the week was suspended. Ah, god damn it! Wow. All right, it was just a picture of steak. Okay, it was a picture of steak, but it was like. It was like really, it looked like this. It looked, it looked like, uh, this is a good one. Give it a second to load. I had a, All right. the steak looked like this. Okay. It was very well done. And okay. the tweet was, this ain't even well done. This shit is congratulations. <laughs> that was pretty good. 
That is good. That was pretty good. I like that one a lot. I don't know why. I saw. I, account I, I saw. Suspended. I saw one. Uh, it was a chart of like all the different like uh, doneness of steak, and it was like rare, medium rare, medium, uh, medium well, and then instead of well done, it said uh, something my parents never told me. Oh, <laughs> I took a while. It took me a second. Yeah, it takes me a second, but like, oh, I like. Took me a second. Yeah. Um. I have an unboxing, but I kind of unboxed okay. it already. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, yeah. This Okay. This is it. Uh, all right. It's this thing. Check this out, guys. I just saw a little show and tell. Right. I got it today. I unbox it. I got a hair in my mouth. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of my favorite things. It's one of these keyboard controller guys. Oh, boy. Uh, where's my unboxing? There we go. Oh, the no. unboxing camera. Unboxing camera is broken. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Oh, this is fun. Oh, oh there this is. is fun. Okay. Yay. Yay. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I've seen that before. Uh, not this one, idiot. Stupid idiot. Um, this is very similar to this one that I have. And also kind mm. of this one. So this is this is the the nice one. This is the uh, the the snack box micro. Right. It's all buttons. It's an all button style uh, fight yeah. pad. Uh, it's got clicky keyboard keys in it. But the left side is uh, individual fingers for buttons. So so it's left up right. No, I fucked that up. Left <laughs> down right up. Which I listen. It's not as confusing as it looks here. You got to try it. But I got something that'll be a little easier for you to wrap your head around, Will. These do WSD. Yeah. So yeah. this so so this is this one is basically just a freaking keyboard. Right. And this is one that I got off of Etsy. Uh-huh. That has has what I think is an Arduino in it that mimics an Xbox 360 controller. Okay. So this works with basically everything, which is mm-hmm. great. Uh, it's a little tiny, so I kind of don't like that about it, but it, it works with everything. It's good. And I have an adapter where it can work for the Nintendo Switch. I also put super clicky keyboard keys in here. Right. Uh, now I have this, which is like the best of both worlds, because it's an arcade, uh, let me freaking unwind it here. It's got the arcade buttons styled. Right. It's all 3D printed. It's got arcade button styled things, and it's got keyboard switches in it, but they're not as clicky as I would like them to be, but they're pretty clicky. And then the left side is the WASD situation. Yeah. It's still a little tiny, though, now that I think about it. Yeah. And this is pretty cool. It was, uh, I got it on Etsy from Keyboard Arcade for $82.66, uh, okay. which, which is not cheap. But I think this one, this one that I had previously was like 100 and something. So they don't, they're, not, they're not cheap. Well, I mean, custom controllers are expensive in general. Yeah, someone's making these. Uh, yeah, yeah. Someone's 3D printing this stuff. My only gripe with this thing is it is an Arduino, and they didn't put the like firmware on the Arduino to make it mimic an Xbox controller. So right now it's just a generic like like control pad, and mm-hmm. that makes it really hard to adapt to other consoles. So like. This little adapter here is a Mayflash adapter that will adapt uh, basically anything to work with the Switch, which is what mm-hmm. I had plugged into this one to make it work with the Switch. But this right. won't work with this because this is not an Xbox controller. It's a friggin' generic gamepad. Right. So today, instead of working on my video like I should have been, <laughs> I was going through a bunch of like... Uh, there's ways to like reflash the Arduino that's in here to like get it to work like an Xbox controller. Right. Couldn't fucking get it to work. I gotta try it again. Um But yeah, it was a little bit of a pain in the ass. But I'll try I'll, I'll play around with it a little more. Um This is like kind of a cool alternative to the snack box micro because this thing is out of stock often and it's like two hundred and fifty dollars. This thing's expensive. Right. This guy, uh a lot cheaper. Anyway, 
That's my little show and tell. Very nice. Very Fuck, cool. what was the name of the Etsy shop again? It is Keybox Arcade. And again, it's just a generic fight pit. Like it works on PC and Mac. And I, ha I it works with emulators and stuff. You can get it to work with like Steam games through Steam. Uh, but it's not going to work on Switch unless you fuck with it. Yeah. Uh, and it's not going to be easy. So don't get it if you want to use it for Switch. Anyway, now we'll talk to you people. Yes. Uh, we will start with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Uh, oh, shit. He did it like when the show started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Excise said, very chill show. Nice to put on after work while playing Switch. That's very nice. Thank you. I'm glad you can chill while I'm yelling and screaming over here. Chubbs the Owl says, I think you forgot to mention Aliens Fireteam Elite, which came out last year or earlier this year. Not that I blame you. It wasn't received very well, so everyone kind of forgot about it. Yeah, we were talking about uh, they announced a new Alien game uh, last week, and I had mentioned like it's... It, like I think we might have mentioned erroneously that it was the first since uh, Alien Isolation, Alien Colonial Marines. Um, forgetting about uh, Fireteam Elite, which came out very recently... Um, but Chubbs is right. Everybody forgot about that game when, uh, as soon as it came out. It had a lot of hype going in, and I remember people like being excited for it when it came out, but I think the excitement died very quickly, mm -hmm. uh, which is unfortunate. I think it's like you know your standard Left 4 Dead template shooter, but with aliens in it. Uh, take it back to this controller. Uh, people in the mm. chat were asking about it, uh, and you linked it. Uh, yeah. If you're gonna get this, I got, I got a blue. No, no, no. I got. Wait, what? Oh, you have the option of switches: brown, orange, or blue. I got blue because those are clicky, but then they're still not that clicky. They're like, I think the clickiest of the three. But uh, I don't know if they're swappable, so I don't know if you can open this up and replace it. I haven't opened this up yeah. yet. I don't know how it easy looks it is like to they open sell, it. it. looks like they sell oh. two different kinds. They sell uh, the one you got, and they got uh, one that's all uh, keyboard buttons. I think it is actually easy to open. I'm going to open it right now. I'm opening with my fingernail. I didn't imagine it would be easy to open. It's a custom-made thing. Well, it, it, right. it well, doesn't have do screws. It pops open. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You, all right. You, well, you, you do, do that. I'll read it. All right. Uh, Lost Tech Wet Light says, so replace booze with coffee and Bob is basically a human bender. Yeah, why did we, why are we talking about me and coffee last week? We're always talking about you and coffee. <laughs> Look at how tiny that Arduino is. Oh, wow. Oh, so it's individually, oh, that's annoying. So, I mean, they're not hot swappable, but they are swappable, but you will need a soldering iron because the wires oh. are individually soldered to each contact i guess that makes sense i mean that's so weird it's an etsy shop so they probably couldn't <laughs> yeah they didn't make like a board yeah i'd imagine you can buy a board probably from like a fight stick company yeah. or something to just pop them in uh how easy is it to take a button out uh it's this easy you just you have to resolder it which is, it would be really easy to solder um, but you'd have to do it for each each key, which is a little annoying. Oh god, all the buttons fall out when I do that. I should stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well I'll put that back together later. Um. Anyway, all right. Uh, uh, what else do we have? Nick Province says Bob flat out admitted that Call of Duty is the same game every year, but the bros boycott Ubisoft games for being the same formula. Do you just prefer playing a multiplayer Call of Duty over single-player story-driven games? I mean, yes. I agree with both statements of the franchises being repetitive, but I occasionally play an Assassin's Creed or Far Cry game here and there, but I stopped playing Call of Duty since Black Ops 2. I think the thing is, yes, Call of Duty is the same thing every year. Um, but I think the problem is Call of Duty is just one franchise in the greater scheme of the Activision Blizzard homunculus. <laughs> and Activision Blizzard, when they make different games, they make different games. Like uh, Tony Hawk is not Call of Duty. Um, 
Overwatch is a first person shooter, but that's not Call of Duty. The thing is, Ubisoft, all of their games, Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, the Tom Clancy games, they're all the same. They're all these open world collectathon games uh, with towers to climb um, and the whole uh, ambitious, ambiguous play it your way style of gameplay, which basically just boils down to you can sneak or you can shoot. Um, that's what we mean by all Ubisoft games are the same. Literally, all Ubisoft games are the same. I have a uh, much I have a much easier answer. Yes, I only play Warzone. I don't like <laughs> Call of Duty games. I only play War and Warzone. Yeah. I like because it's different than every other Call of Duty released since yeah. fucking Modern Warfare. Um, I played Modern Warfare. Liked Modern Warfare, played Modern Warfare 2, liked that a lot because it was a lot like Modern Warfare 1. Then I played Modern Warfare 3 and I was like, okay, this is getting kind of old. And then I played, oh, Black Ops, which is just like Modern Warfare. And I was like, okay, come on, give me a second. And then Black Ops 2. And I was like, all right, now we're getting crazy. And then I played, was it Infinite Warfare? No, it was Black Ops Two. It was Black Ops Two. When I when I played Black Ops Two, I was playing the single player, and then I had a network connection error while I was playing the game yeah. in fucking single player, and I rage quit and stop and never played it again. And I didn't play any other Call of Duty games until freaking Warzone came out. Yeah. And look, there's if if you want to play a Ubisoft game or an or an Activision Blizzard game, like there's no judgment here. Like I'll okay like I'll occasionally like look at the store and like I'm tempted to download. Watch Dogs 2 when it's on sale, because I've heard that is actually a very good game and a big improvement on the first one. Uh, I just don't have fucking time for games anymore. Um, but, you know, we all have our, you know, little uh, problems with every game developer out there. And I think uh, Ubisoft and Activision, you know, the two biggest publishers out there, just seem to have the biggest problems out there. So, Metascension just linked. I think the board inside the controller is a zero delay encoder, and it's this little guy, a little tiny guy, that you that comes with these little wires, and you could just you could just plug them into friggin' arcade buttons. You can make anything wow. an arcade button. That's pretty crazy. Get that. It's for PC, PC games. Does it pick up as an Arduino? Because I listen. If I'm gonna do something like this, I want it to register as an Xbox controller. Because right. then, because then it's so much more versatile. Mm-hmm. Um, that's pretty cool. I've been wanting to start like fucking around with like making whole ass controllers. So this is cool to, this is pretty cool to see. But I did download the whole Arduino like software and shit today, and I wanted to blow my brains out. It was, it looked, <laughs> it it was, it was a nightmare. Yeah. And I thought I bricked it, but I didn't. <laughs> um, uh. Last is that the glow cloud with I thought it was generally agreed upon uh, that the cookie is the worst part of the Oreo. Listen, who who said that? You need who said that? Okay, I I agree. If it's the chocolate cookie, not a fan. No, I disagree. But continue. You need a little. You you, look. Is this because it's the worst part of the cookie? Doesn't mean it's bad. No. It the 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 filling is what gives it its personality, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, it's it is just a cookie, you know. The, the different fillings are what gives it its personality. But the cookie on its own is fine, and the cream on its own is fine. You put them together, and that's where you get magic, baby. I would say that is true for the vanilla wafers. <laughs> the the store by me, I was trying to find like the thin the vanilla Oreo thins, but all they had were lemon flavor golden Oreo thins. Yeah. Ew. I don't want that. I want regular ass Oreo thin, uh, golden Oreo thins. Anyway, now we're in the chat for a hot minute. Yes. Uh, um, Silent Mongo says you can trash the cream and be fine. Then you're not eating an Oreo. <laughs> what does that mean? You could trash the cream and be fine. You can get rid of the cream and like just eat the cookie. Okay. <laughs> and it's not an Oreo. I do Oreo surgery. I take the lemon cream and put it on the chocolate cookie. 
Well, I that's need, different. That's I need to. Know. That's just I being that scientist. That's like. I need to know what that's like. Did you see? Like, I think uh, Nabisco sold uh, Ritz Oreos, where like half of it was a Ritz cracker. And like, my friend just bought Ritz and bought Oreos and just made it him fucking self. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Is that peanut butter? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That. But then it's got vanilla. Oh, I guess it's like it's it's kind of like having marshmallow fluff and and yeah, Nutella and peanut butter all together. Ah, uh, can I buy this? Yeah, it's uh well, you, you get on eBay for a hundred dollars or three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, my friend was looking for it. It was he said it was sold out. So he's like, I just bought Ritz and I bought Oreos. Limited edition, one in one thousand, rare order, confirmed, free shipping. Jesus Christ! All right, who wants to who wants to be the whale? Yeah, <laughs> who wants Help to ship that to our PO box? <laughs> Wait, what is this? This is the official website. Oh no, the snack you didn't know you were waiting for has sold out. Oh piss! Uh, man, Oreos got to get better with their you know, limited edition stuff and like not have them be limited edition. Cause I don't want to pay. I don't want to buy Batman Oreos on eBay and I don't want to buy these on eBay. <laughs> Hold on. The site was just updated. Ah, piss. The snack you didn't <laughs> know you were waiting for is sold out. It's crazy. That they were right though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good times. Damn. Why would they do one in 1,000? I don't know. I guess they just expect you to make it yourself, which you could easily do. Uh, no Banana Suit says, regular Oreo thins are so much better than regular Oreos. That's what we were saying. Better yeah. chocolate to cream ratio. That's what we're saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, what else do you guys have for us? So uh, we, can, we can get the fuck out of here. Edward Bova posted, uh, Game Explained has a Sonic Origins music comparison. I will be watching that later. I uh, Right so they... before we started, I flipped through it a little bit. Uh, yeah. It's fine. Uh, but there's a lot more that they changed than I was expecting. Yeah. So I'm a little upset about that. But yeah, uh, it's fine. You know, as long as I get to play Sonic 3, I'll be happy. Yeah. It pretty much confirms that the music is the reason why we haven't been getting too much Sonic 3 in our lives. Yeah. Bob should start a third-party controller company like 8-Bit Do. Say that louder. <laughs> why, Say that uh, loud enough so my girlfriend of... can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what would your niche be? Because everybody makes controllers. What would your niche be? Well, I would just make controllers that I want. Like, you know, I want the D-pad to be where where it is. The problem is, like, yeah. I've talked to Layer Shift about this before. And he's always like, what would be the perfect controller for you? And I, I'm always like, kind of just the Ape do Pro 2. <laughs> kind of just already did it, you know? Right. Um. But... I like I like this sort of situation. Like like this is just a mm -hmm. somebody just 3D printed this and put it together and I just spent $85 on it. <laughs> Cuz there's nothing like this. You know, and you can get really wacky with stuff like this. With custom made yeah. stuff like this with clicky buttons. And also I would like some clickier buttons and also I would like it if the if the the switches were hot swappable. So like there's ways to iterate off of stuff that people are already doing. Right. Um and also, there's people on Etsy and stuff who make, uh, who take um, pro controllers and elite controllers and modify them to 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 make the buttons clickier and 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 change the colors of them and stuff. So there's there's yes. plenty of there's plenty of room on the market for for the things that I'm doing in YouTube videos. Just sell them. Yeah. <laughs> Bob would make controllers for the three other humans that want to play everything on WASD and change their minds on the layout every 18 hours. Okay, dude. How do I ban? How do I ban somebody? 
My, Jay Cannon says mine. Uh, I guess he's he's his favorite controller or his dream controller. Mm -hmm. I think would be the Wii U Pro controller shell with offset sticks at, with clicky buttons. If more games use them, analog buttons and triggers. Uh, I Pro? actually liked the Wii U Pro controller because it had the analog sticks up top and the and the D-pad and the face buttons below. And I you... think that like makes a lot of sense because those are the two sticks you use the most. So have them like right where your thumbs naturally go. Yeah, I liked that layout, but what he described, he's described offset sticks. He just described an Xbox 360 controller. This is just an Xbox 360 controller. Yeah. If you if you move the buttons and the thumbstick, then yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I I think for a lot of games, the thumbsticks at the top actually kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um, and it felt good using it like that. Uh, but yes, <laughs> but PlayStation has them on the bottom, which kind of doesn't make yeah. any sense other than having the D pad yeah. at the top, but the, I don't use that for PlayStation games. And then, yeah. uh, Xbox, the offsets kind of cool. I'm kind of cool with the offset on Xbox. Yeah. Uh, Bob's controllers come exclusively in the colors you'd expect from hardcore, from a hardcore drummer. Pastel pink and teal. <laughs> you know, I built a snare drum back in the day, which sounded yes, like absolute that. shit, but I was in a lot of denial. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was... Uh, it was like bright green with blue stars, right? Yeah, it was uh, like a mint green with blue stars yeah. and it had giant holes in it. And it was just fucking sounded horrible. Um, anyway. Uh, anybody else? Bob's controllers would be a lifestyle brand. Imagine his slick commercials. Thanks. Um. Can Bob can drum? Not anymore. Those days are behind me. Uh, I think we're good. Thanks for okay. hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. And thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. So go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Thanks for being here, guys. And remember, hey, if you're listening to us over on wherever else you're at uh, and you have Amazon Prime, you can drop a Prime subscription over here for free and you need to do it uh, every month or you can do it every month. It doesn't auto-renew. Um, mm -hmm. So come uh, support us for no additional cost. We would very much appreciate that. I'm trying to get a Lamar Zoko. Uh, go watch Jackson. It's rare that he gets a, a, a raid from me because I'm usually live after him. Uh, and I got to go make a whole ass video now about these fucking controllers that I can't get to work. Um, <laughs> thanks for being here. I'll see y'all later. Goodbye. Bye.